To determine the mass of Jupiter, what we need is to observe some object that orbits Jupiter. We need to know the period of, of that orbiting object and the size of the orbit. So let's draw a picture. So we have Jupiter here. We have one of the moons. Let's say it's Callisto. And Callisto goes around Jupiter and takes about 16 days, a little, a little over 16 days. So it's going around. The period of the orbit is, if you look it up, 16.7 days. And the size of the orbit, or the pretty much the radius, if we're assuming it's a, it's a um, circular orbit, is 1.88 million kilometers, so almost two, almost 2 million kilometers. So let's say it's uh, 1.9. So I have, uh, uh, let's say A is a 1.9 million kilometers. Okay, so we write down Kepler's law, and we've, as in the previous example, we since we're looking for the mass, we're looking for the mass of uh, of Jupiter. Um, we write down Kepler's law in the following in the following way: the mass total, which is which is the mass of the. Um, um, combined mass of Callisto and Jupiter, but since Callisto is so much smaller, it's going to be pretty much the mass of Jupiter. This is going to be equal to A cubed in kilometers divided by P squared, measured in days, times the constant 7.9 times 10 to the 10 kilogram day squared per kilometer cubed. Okay. Now we have now we're given the size. So this is going to be pretty much the the, the mass of Jupiter will be 1.9 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. We cube that. We divide by 16.7 days. We square that. We multiply by the 7.9 times 10 to the 10 kilogram days squared per kilometer cubed. This comes out to be 1.9 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. And that's the mass of Jupiter. If we wanted to compare it to things, the uh, mass of the sun is approximately 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. So we're really talking about a thousand times less massive than the sun. The mass of the earth is about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So we're talking about uh, 500 times more massive than the Earth.